Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you all are doing good. So today we are going to talk about difference between in vivo staining and in vitro staining. So let's start. See the first point of difference, type of specimen. So in case of in vivo staining, living biological specimen is examined. That can be any type of cells or tissue. And in case of in vitro staining, that or non-living biological specimen is examined. Let's see the second point of difference, type of stain. So vital staining reagents are used in case of in vivo staining. Always remember vital stains are those kind of staining reagents, chemicals or dyes that are actually harmless to the living biological specimen what we are examining. Or we can say that the use of vital stain never result in killing of the living biological specimen. Okay. And if we talk about in vitro staining, here we use non-vital stains. Non-vital staining reagents are those kind of chemicals or dye which result in killing of the biological specimen under examination. Let's see the third point of difference, fixation. So in case of in vivo staining, fixation is not required. And in case of in vitro staining, fixation is required. So what is fixation? Fixation is actually a type of process which is used to preserve the internal and external structure of biological specimen what we are examining, right? And fixation in uh, case of staining in laboratory is generally carried out by means of heat or by the use of certain type of chemicals, okay? Let's see the fourth point of difference, outcome. So in vivo staining reveals cytological details like cell or structure its form, morphology or position within a cell or tissue. And secondly, it also helps us to know about the sites where particular type of chemical reactions are taking place within the cells or tissue under examination, right? And always remember, in vivo staining is generally used in histology, right? And also in disease diagnosis. And if we talk about in vitro staining, the major outcomes of in vitro staining includes determination of size, shape and arrangement, differentiation between different type of groups and identification of some special type of structures. And always remember in vitro staining finds its major application mainly to stain the microbial cells like bacteria, right? So now we are coming towards the fifth point of difference, examples. So if we talk about examples of in vivo staining, then Janus green staining and tripen blue staining are very common type of in vivo staining protocols. Okay. If we talk about Janus green staining, it is used to stain mitochondria. And if I talk about tripen blue staining, tri tripen blue staining is used uh, to distinguish between live and dead cells. Okay. And if I talk about Janus green and tripen blue, these both are actually the examples of vital staining reagents. Okay. Or vital stains these are. Now, if we talk about in vitro staining, then gram staining is very good example of in vitro staining. Let's see the sixth point of difference, general observation part. So when we will be performing in vivo staining using, using tripe and blue, then this type of results generally we get. So what kind of results uh, we can observe over here that dead cells will actually get stained by tripe and blue and living cells will not be stained by tripe and blue. Why? Because tripe and blue is a kind of dye which actually cannot be penetrated or its uptake is not possible by living cells, okay? But when cells uh, are uh, dead, okay, then or they have damaged membranes, then they can easily take this stain and get stained. So it is a very good example of vital stain, which is used to distinguish between live and dead cells in the specimen what we are examining, right? Now, if we talk about in vitro staining, then as I already told you, gram staining is very good example. Gram staining helps us to determine what the size, shape and arrangement of the bacterial cells. And secondly, it also helps us to differentiate between group of bacteria like gram positive and gram negative bacteria, right? So always remember that in vivo staining is of very much uh, use when it comes to disease diagnosis and in vitro staining, it actually is useful in identifying various type of microorganisms or we can say especially bacteria under examination and also to check the purity of the stored bacterial cultures which have been stored for a longer time period, right? So these are some of the practical applications of in vivo and in vitro staining. I hope this information will be useful for all of you. Thank you so much. Keep watching.